The Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Welcome to Mombasa County. This is the Great Debaters Contest, the Coast Edition. I am your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Nyumbok. Today we have Ali Dina Visram versus Highgate Academy. Their motion is a cashless economy is more theoretical than practical. We'll have the first proposer take the stage now. You have three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, as the saying goes, a good day is seen in the morning. And how it ends is marked by the beautiful faces that you meet. Thank God I'm in a hall full of beautiful people. Now, 17 years ago, bravery, courage, and agility were brought together in my mother's womb to form I, a classic man, Likomba Dennis, ready to propose a motion that states a purely cashless economy is more theoretical than practical. First and foremost, what is a cashless economy? This is a system that no longer entails the use of liquid cash or physical cash. What do I mean? A purely cashless economy is more of this and no more of this. Why is it theory? Let's face the fact. Lack of knowledge and skills. A research carried out by the World Bank stated that 28% of Kenyans are illiterate. What does this tell? Remember, for you to operate in a cashless economy system, you have to know how a debit card or a credit card looks like. Not, no, not only knowing how it looks like, but how it operates. Let's face the fact. Now, if you don't have the knowledge and skills, how is it possible for us to go in cashless economy? Remember, you don't need to be literate for you to know the difference between a 100 shilling note and 200 shilling note. Secondly, there is an issue of epileptic nature of power. What do I mean? How many times have we been victims of blackouts? How many times have we wished that we love control over the power supply? But as they say, if wishes were horses, definitely I would have a ranch. This epileptic in terms of power supply, remember that these machines, there is a phone, the M-Pesa, you need to have a phone, right? And a phone needs a charger, and this charger includes the power in it. Just imagine, with a phone battery low, with the debit machines, the credit machines, so low due to lack of power, how then will it be possible for we to go into purely cashless economy? Let us think and reason. Remember, the system is purely cashless. We are used to a cash, liquid cash, that is, system of transaction. We are used to it. Just imagine of a situation whereby you get into a point in a matatu, you no longer bargain. What you have to do is use this card. Really. A sufferer like me, how will I be able to get into my destination? How will I be able to, maybe it's a wedding, and my wedding day, I don't have uh, the appropriate fund that is needed. I have only 50 shillings, and on my way to the wedding, I require 100 shillings. Can I begin to the conductor and tell him, dude, this is the day of my life I've been waiting for. I don't have the 50 shillings. Please, allow me. But with this, how will the conductor listen to you? Your baby will see you as the biggest disappointment ever to live in this world. May God bless you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening statements. I'd like to borrow a quote from Michael Bank Jepson, which says that a cashless society is no longer an illusion, but a vision that can be fulfilled within a reasonable time frame. Let's talk about Denmark. It has already been tried in Denmark. Denmark has gone cashless. This is because they want to reduce the number of bank robberies. And indeed, it has worked in, De in Denmark from 110 to 16 bank robberies. If it happened in Denmark, why shouldn't it happen in Kenya? Let's talk about M-Pesa and Airtel money. It saves you time and energy to move from your home 
in order for you to go and make payments. But when you have M-Pesa or Airtel money, you can make the payments right from the comfort of your house. Let's talk about Somali. Somali is one of the Africa's poorest countries. A mobile revolution has created an informal electronic banking system with more efficient and convenient for many more developed countries. This is to say that the people from Somali, they are using a cashless economy. This is seen when one has to buy things. They don't have to carry liquid cash. Why? Because they fear to be attacked, maybe by the Al-Shabaab or by the other thieves. So if Somali, one of the poorest countries, can do that, why can't Kenya? This is to quote from Canada. Canada being one of the countries, it no longer produces coins, neither does it produce notes. Why? Because plastic has a longer future expectancy. This is to say that plastic lives for long, more than money. Take for instance, what if a 50 shillings note is rained on? This is to say that your, that 50 no, shillings note cannot be used anywhere. You take it to the shop and they tell you, my nigga, this money is so doomed, it cannot be used. What if it's torn? You just can't use it. What about the plastic? The plastic can be renewed. Even if lost, you can find it. So I would like the propositions to just join us in opposing the motion. Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals now, beginning with the proposers. You have three minutes. Um, thank you. My name is Kiru Kanye and I'm from Aldina Vistrom. It's said that men dream so that they can convince themselves that miracles are real. I think they have good intentions, but I think they might still be dreaming. So on the part of my rebuttal, I'd like to tell them that first of all, the legislation in Denmark is still only proposed. It has not been passed and Denmark still has a 41% cash-based economy. I'd also like to tell them that there is no fully cashless society out there. I recently watched a documentary, Gichopevu, if I may use the term in Kiswahili, that was talking about the banana industry in Somalia. There was no mention of Somalia going cashless. They still talked about the Somali currency, Somali notes, I literally saw them changing hands on my television at home. You could have seen it too. And also, on the part of banknotes getting tired or torn or whatever else she wants to tell us, the central bank annually takes in any money that is too old to be used and replaces it with new currency, which is why once in a while you see new banknotes out there. Now, a man who wants to float does not tie himself down to a rock that is sinking. We cannot tie ourselves down to a cashless system that is going to bring our economy down. The cashless system is not realistic. First of all, the transition will be too violent for our country to handle. In our country, we have three main classes, the middle class, the upper class, and the low income earners. For the middle class and the upper class, the transition will be smooth because they have the money to go out there and open their bank accounts. They have the money to go out there and deposit. But what about the low income earner who only gets his income every day? The same money he gets on that day, he uses on food for the same day, living from hand to mouth. Even if he could, get the relevant technology, the relevant bank account, anything else that he needs, what money will he deposit in there? And if he went to the shop, will he, be, will he not be allowed to buy bread simply because he did not have a debit card? The transition will not be smooth for our country. Also, it restricts our freedom. It's only in 2015 that in Greece, when the country was in debt, the government took 10% of all the money in all the bank accounts and then shut the same banks down for a whole week, and then opened the banks again and allowed people to only withdraw 120 euros. Why would we want to give that sort of power to our government? Why would we want to relinquish the control of our money to a higher power? Why would you not want to keep your right to use your money at whatever time you need to use it? Why would we not want to do that? It's not practical to tie a starving donkey to a cart and then say that he has the potential to pull a load. You must feed him first. Let us not tie ourselves to a cart with a system that is not practical and then say that in time, we can make it practical. It will still take time and I don't think we can handle that right now. Let us deal with issues right now. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your cross-examination. 
My name is Mtua Benego Kealo from Hagate Academy, ready to oppose the motion that says a cashless economy is more theoretical than practical. First of all, electric means of payment offers, offers the customers and the business, transaction, the business people with international cards, for example, the NACMAT global cards, which are used in purchasing of goods and services. And also, this leads to the increase in level of gross domestic product of the country's national income. They also offer credit facilities to the business enterprises and the consumers, whereby these people stand in a position to access goods and services. And after that, they'll pay later when they get money. This helps whereby these people will be in a position to be entrepreneurs, which leads to entrepreneurial culture, whereby many people will be, will be self-employed. This will help to curb the problem of unemployment in Kenya, which is a major problem. Furthermore, it is a safer means of payment and convenient to, ca to carry from one place to another. As you can see, the carrying of visa cards and the international cards such as, such as the NACMAT global cards, even if they get lost or thieves take your cards or they steal them, you'll find that these thieves may not stand a position to access your money and also to purchase goods and services as they contain the details for the specified personnel. This electric means of payment gives the buyers, helps the buyers to get some amount from banks. So when the people get money from banks, we'll find that they stand in a position. This money will stand in a position to flow on the hands of consumers, whereby this money will be help will help in running development projects which will help the country of Kenya. Thank you. Ay, yo basaco, es yo he empezado, mana vida empieza, a tu vez y tu mapesa. Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap or poem about Safaricom M-Pesa on WhatsApp and you could win 1000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. have been asked how will cashless systems bring down our economy and the oppositions have been challenged about how petty transactions like for example buying a matchbox can be transacted using a cashless system. Poser number three, you have three minutes. Thank you very much for your question. You are asking how the cashless economy can bring down the economy of Kenya for example, correct? Now you see when we're switching to this cashless system it means that every transaction is going to be wireless and it's going to be digitalized. So what you're doing actually is cutting down every informal way of making a transaction and all the people who work without actually having to cash their money in the banks when getting paid. So tell me, aren't you cutting down money that can be brought to the government by cutting away these people who bring money to the government in this manner? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that there's a thin line between craziness and bravery. But I believe too that there's a thick line between a dream and reality. A cashless economy, to me, is still a dream. Here's why. One, this cashless economy is going to be very capital intensive. What do I mean? You see, everything about this cashless economy is about money. From the sitting MP who's going to be paid so that he can pass the bill to setting up the servers that are going to be used in order for transactions. All this costs money. And you can't tell me that during the, the, the education of the people for the cashless economy, you're going to employ new teachers or you're going to form new facilities so that we can be taught about it. We as Kenyans already cannot teach people in Turkana. What do you mean when you say that the government is going to step up when they're going to talk about a cashless economy? Are you saying that when it comes to basic education, we, we reject it, but when it comes to anything digital, we just go forward because it's, it has phones and gadgets on it? Stop lying to us. Two, the system is very vulnerable. What do I mean? The cashless system is bringing in new threats. It's bringing in new problems to us. Right now, 
uh, porch, porches are hazard. Porches are a headache to us already. We have drug dealers. The, the other day, Kenyatta came to, our, to Mombasa to talk about drugs and how they are influencing and bringing down our economy. These are two problems that are already causing havoc to us. You see, when we implement a purely cashless economy, you're bringing in new problems. You're bringing in hackers and you're bringing in uh, system shutdowns that may render us bankrupt in one day. What happens to my money? What happens to your money? The money you worked hard for when the system crashes? Does the money just go away? Two, what happens to people who are hacked? Does it mean just because I know C++, I can instantly become a millionaire and render you bankrupt? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Silvano Kai. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond. Thank you very much. My name is Francis Solo from Highgate Academy. I want to answer the first question, which was asked by my fellow audience there, to ask me about petty payments. So let me bring it clear to you, because it seems they are somehow hoodwinked. Uh, regardless of the amount you pay, or the, regardless of the amount that you want to give out, or to buy something, petty, petty things, it is very, very clear, these people who are doing business, they have embraced this system because they knew there are some petty cases where we'll encounter things like five shillings. They have the machines there. As long as you avail yourself with the cards, you just swipe. So any kind of transaction that will take place, regardless of the amount, the machine is there, only your card is waiting for you. I think that one is very, very clear. Let us talk about this cashless transaction means. It has reduced corruption very, very much like in Kenya. Let me give you an example. I was reading a magazine where a lawyer, just here in Kenya, his account was freezed because he has got a lot of money in his account. And he has a wife. The wife is surviving on 15,000 Kenya shillings. Now tell me, he's living in a very luxurious area, owning a very big car, and this man has never transacted even a cent from his account. And the wife is only earning 15,000. So tell me. The account was freezed. So what do we imply? Corruption is being eradicated in Kenya. And this thing should be embraced thoroughly because we are heading to a Kenya free of corruption. If other countries have done it, let me give you an example. South Korea, the government has successfully put in place policies to encourage, eh, to encourage cashless behavior. And the other Asian nations, they can learn from it. For example, in the year 2006, 2000, and 2002, 2006, the rate of cashless transaction increased from 40% to 56% and reduced from 25 from 40% use of cash from 40% to 25% and this has really helped this country they have developed their country simply because the any time you do a transaction using cashless means they transact a certain amount of money which goes to the, the economy of the country boosting our development that point is very very clear I want to give you another case. A cashless means of transaction has really helped other countries and it has really helped international investment, foreign investment directly from your comfort zone, from your bed, anywhere that will call your comfort zone. You invest in another country, hence saves time. Why wasting a lot of time of tickets, traveling to other European countries, you want to go and invest your money there, why? And you can simply do it right from your comfort zone. Let me give you another case. When we embrace use of cash, there will be a high rate of inflation. And when inflation increases in the country, the money that will, uh, the, there will be a rapid increase in the, of, the price, of the prices of items. And to cap this, use cashless. Another one, it has, uh, it has actually helped country. Thank you very much. We'll hear final submissions now. Proposition, you have a minute. My dear audience, each of our mothers taught us that we can dream that we will be whatever we want to be in future. But none of them taught us to stick our hands in the fire and expect not to get burned. As of this time, World Bank statistics tell us that there are only eight secure servers for every 100 people in Kenya. That we only produce 157 kilowatts per hour, up from 155 three years ago, a whole three years, and we only get two more kilowatts. It is simply not realistic. Without the necessary knowledge, the necessary infrastructure, the necessary attitude, an account for human rights, 
and all of these other factors, it is not realistic for us to go completely cashless. Let us not fix what is not broken. Let us keep our money because it has served us well enough ever since it was invented. Let us do this for ourselves and for our children. Let us keep our future safe. Thank you. Opposition, you have a minute as well. We are all moving from analog to digital. We want to change the notion that people have that carrying money really shows that you are rich. If you are a music lover just like me, I hope you listen to Big Sean. He says that one man can change the world. And I hope, I beg to say that one thing can change Kenya, which is the cashless economy. I will leave you with the chorus which says that cashless can change Kenya. Thank you. Aldina, I've really enjoyed your discussion. I've really enjoyed your argument. I want to say that when I listened to you, it was almost like wisdom personified. You know, beginning with Dennis, definition by illustration is always the best. You came with a 50 shilling note, you came with a card, and, to, and you are trying to prove to your audience your point. That was commendable. If you can only appeal to the sense of sight of your listeners, and most of, also of the judges, then definitely you stand a chance of winning. I love your play with words, epileptic nature of power, you know, cannot really encourage a cashless economy in Kenya. That was very creative. And then if wishes were horses, I expect beggars, yeah, but came the shocker. If wishes were horses, then definitely you'll have a ranch. I, 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 you know, you have a way with words that easily persuade uh, your listeners to listen to you. And I think in my judging sheet, I wrote simple reasoning and logic, but immensely significant in supporting the motion. Kiru, you are an awesome debater. You are just better than good. I mean, you are a, you are a thoroughgoing critique. I love the way you cross-examined your opponents, especially on the issue of Somalia and uh, on the issue of Denmark quite intelligent. Then came the two statements. A man who wants to float does not tie himself to a rock that is sinking. Very beautiful statement that validates your argument. Then the second argument was tying a starving don donkey rather to a cat and ask it to pull it will not really mean that it's going to pull it. You're just a, you have a way with words and you are very convincing and persuasive and I credit you. I mean, if you deserve it, we give it to you. Okaya, there's a thin line and then you talked about a thick line. I love this thick line that you're talking about. And I think you're saying that we have problems such as poaching and drugs that need to be addressed and not the problems that will come as a result of using cashless economy. For example, the issue of uh, hacking, is it? Yeah, that's correct. But when you're referring to the president, please don't say Kenyatta, you know, give him the respect that he deserves. Otherwise, to the two teams, it was good teamwork. Excellent. Uh, I credit you for what you did. For Highgate, uh, Nicole, a good beginning and a very good final submission. I think one of, the, one of the strengths that you have is your smile, you know, and that automatically draws audiences to you. So keep it up. And I love your final submission that you even are able to sing. Um, you know, that, that was really, really good. Um, I think I penalized your team for poor use of time, and especially this goes to Abednego, and a bumpy presentation as well. And I'm sure that next time you can do better. Francis Olo, you have the presence, and you start off well with your response to the questions. But I just have a challenge with some of the submissions that you're making. For example, I think at some point you say that for us to be able to curb the high cost of living, we should go cashless. And I'm wondering how will that happen? So I thought you would actually provide some solutions to that because I found that argument very um, pedestrian. And then going forward, if you're going to make any statements, you want to attribute them to credible sources so that we are also able to trust what you're saying. The judges awarded Aladina Visram 76%. Please give them a hand. They gave Highgate 68%, which is still a fair trial. Give them a hand as well. But our winners for this debate are Ali Dino Visram. Very well. We thank the teams on stage for putting up a spirited effort. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Safaricom Mpesa and KBC Channel One, urging members of the audience to keep following us on Twitter and also our other social media platforms. I'm Austin Yambok. And I'm Mariam Bishar. Keep watching the show.
The Great Debaters Contest was brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa.